Hey everybody, Ted the Butcher here, coming to you from a snowy day in Connecticut. I got my niece Taylor here. Say hi, Taylor. Hey, what's up? Oh yeah, see, we're standing outside in the snow once again. You know what? It's too cold out here. Let's go inside and cut some meat. All right, everybody, we are back inside, nice and warm, and we are on the block. What are we talking about today? The king of all meat, beef, specifically beef top round. Now, before we get into that, I'd just like to clarify, although I'm not Batman, I am Ted the Butcher, and I'm happy that you're joining me today. So, this is the point in the show, before we start cutting, where I like to tell you a little bit about the animals and show you kind of where things come from. And uh, in the past, if you watch other episodes, you would see that I would draw a nice picture of an animal and kind of point out where the, where the meat comes from on that particular animal. I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to use a sweet book right here called Whole Beast Butchery by Ryan Farr. Now, Ryan Farr is a butcher. Uh, he owns a shop called 4505 Meats out in San Francisco, and he is doing some hardcore craft butchery. So uh, we're going to use one of the pages from his book that shows you a nice diagram of a cow, and we're going to point out a little bit about where this uh, top round cut comes from. All right? All right, so now we're looking at Whole Beast Butchery, and here's our diagram of the cow uh, from Ryan Farr's book. Now, this is great. This lays it out really well. and something you could kind of check out at all times. So we're talking about top round today, right? So that's coming out of these sections right here, the leg and the sirloin. You know, you're coming off the short loin and the flanks. These muscles, you know, uh, a cow has these big, strong muscles through here, and these, these big legs are doing all the work to support that animal's weight. So what happens is you get big, lean muscles through there, not a lot of intramuscular fat because uh, they're getting a lot of work and they're really, these muscles get really tight and big and strong and they're really conducive to methods like braising uh, and things like that and grilling is awesome and also these pieces are wonderful uh, for marinating and that's something where when we're talking about top round steak or roasts, you know, anything that you season up or can marinate is really, really great. All right, so now that you're nice and educated, let's bring out that big, beautiful beef. Now, when you, when you get it whittled down this way, when, you, when you're dealing with this piece, you got some nice fat up on here, uh, you know, that, that uh, sort of uh, top layer of, uh, of fat that sits just under the skin. On the bottom, as this piece is it comes into play with a lot of bones you got a lot of membranes down here you got a lot of that silver skin uh, and you got some of these gnarlier pieces uh, from like the eye round and the bottom round because all these nice leg muscles are sitting together uh, and, and working hard to to help that big old animal move around so as a butcher our first step uh, my first step anyway is to clean this up a little bit now you've got some of this membrane down here Right, and it's just it's it's not bad. You want to like put your knife right underneath that, and just kind of kind of trim it off. Now, keep in mind as you're doing this, right? And this is uh, obviously I'm using the big knife. We can do this with the smaller knife too. This is a big piece of meat, so so you cover more ground with the big knife. But this is a good way to demonstrate here. Uh, when you're cutting, you're not cutting down into the piece, right? You're getting that knife just under these membranes like that, keeping the sharp edge the blade point it upwards a little bit okay and what that's going to do is allow you to dig under those membranes and dig under that silver skin without cutting deep down into the meat see I'm taking these pieces off here there's really no meat on there uh, it's just that membrane all the meat is staying where we want it right in this nice big piece right here so I might spend some time doing this right now I'm going to go back to that back to that big knife again like I said just to show you, and do this a little bit quicker for you, um, get some of that off right there. So as we do this, we're exposing these nice big pieces of meat, nice and clean. Back in here, right, this is that back side, right, as you can see on this piece, it's got a big old, big old round body, nice and thick, and then it kind of tapers down uh, in, in this direction here. This is the back of it, the way we typically look at it. I'll show you in just one second 
how we cut this to make it make it look a little more like the roasts we know and love and the steaks we know and love. Because what we're going to get out of here is a nice top round steak first. And uh, then we're going to go on to do some roast and some stir fry. So I'm going to flip it over. And this is my good side. This is that, that side we're taking off. Right? And I'm going to just kind of mark that with my knife. I want to be about there. And I'm going to go right on through. All right. Nice long strokes with that. We take that off. Boom. So this is going to be a nice piece of trim that we're going to use uh, for some other things, preferably like stir fries and, and other things like that. I'll show you that uh, in a couple uh, of episodes. So we'll get there. Um, so we put that to the side for now. And then the other thing we're going to do right now is take a nice piece. Now you can see, you can see the inside. See, we're into that solid muscle there. And that's exactly where we want to be on this big old roast right here. So, uh, and of course, when we go for the steaks as well. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to square up this front. Okay. And we're basically doing the same thing. Let me, uh, let me turn it this way for you. So I have a nice flat side. Again, here's that nice solid muscle, right? This is where the roast and steaks are going to come from. And here you have some more of that connective tissue. So uh, again, we're going to cut this out. Now there's great meat in here, but we're going to need to trim it out. And so when it comes to using this for the steaks and the roast, we're just going to take that off right now. Okay. I can see a piece, a couple pieces here on the top that I can go right through. Just take those off. This is, this is, you know, some of the trimming that we're going to do later anyway. So we're going to take that off right now while I see it. And then we just take those pieces off. So when we go to the front to take off that nice piece of stir fry, again, I know about where the, the, uh, the thinner and the connective pieces are. And I want to be back into here just a little bit, right? So that's going to get me into those nice muscles and it's going to make that first cut a nice steak, uh, as opposed to a piece that is, you know, it's got a lot of la tissue and a lot of membrane in it uh, and just won't be that great to eat. So now that I know where I want to be, we're going to cut perpendicular, right, to this first cut we made here along the side. So we're nice and square. So if you can see kind of how I'm doing it, let me, let me turn it this way. I think it'd be better. We're basically cutting right about there. You make a line with your knife. You know, you could go even in a little bit further. I can see how this is tapered in the front. So I'm going to pull that cut right back in here, but you're going to cut. So it's nice and square, 90 degrees to the first cut that you made. All right. So let me go for it. All right. We'll take that off. And now I'm going to put this to the side again, uh, put it right back here. Okay. So you can see, we still have to do a little bit of trimming here, but now you can start to see how this is going to become a top brown steak. That's the shape you're used to, right? And, and, and that's where we start getting into this piece and we can start slicing it for steaks. Before we dig our knife into this wonderful hunk of beef, let me tell you uh, something, a side note here about the London broil. If you go to London in the beautiful uh, United Kingdom and you ask someone, where's the best place to get a London broil? They might look at you funny. Why? Why, Ted? Well, I'm going to tell you why. The London broil is not actually some sort of cut that originated uh, in London or anything like that. A London broil is a cooking method. And... I often see top round steaks uh, in grocery stores and supermarkets labeled as a top round London broil. Now, most of the time, if you're cooking in this style, a London broil, the way to do it is with a flank steak or a skirt steak, something like that. All London broil means is a piece of steak that is usually marinated and broiled in the oven and cut across the grain into thin strips. Now. A top round steak is very good for that uh, because it's a piece that really is great when you marinate it. It's great when you throw it on the grill uh, or in the broiler. It works really well there too, but it's great when you marinate it. And then whichever method you're using for cooking, you want to cut across the grain and keep the slices really thin. I'm going to do a little, uh, I'll show you just one second what that looks like and what we mean by across the grain. But I just wanted to clarify that London broil 
is in fact a cooking technique and not necessarily a cut of meat. And again, it's more often done with flank steak than top round, but I often see where, where I am here in Connecticut, uh, top rounds labeled as London broils. So dropping that knowledge on you from Meatland, right? That's what we do here on, on the block. So, all right, so once we get here, right, we start to see how our steak is taking shape and we're gonna go ahead and cut it, right? So pick a point. Now thickness, weight, anything like that, it depends on how many people you're serving. This is one, this is no bone in here, right? This is a nice solid piece of meat. So the recommendation from a butcher should be about a half a pound a person. Um, that should feed all your guests, you know, and you, you know your guests better than we do. So, you know, go ahead and adjust from there. But the rough recommendation is about half a pound a person. If you have four people, you need about a two pound steak. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let's say we're going to do one that we're going to marinate and then throw in the broiler. We can cut a nice steak just like that. All right. Now, you're going to get a piece on the bottom here. There's a vein that runs through the bottom of this. I should have taken that out before we cut our steak. But you can see here, this vein right along the bottom of the steak, which is right here, that you just want to cut out. Just use your small knife and just trim that right down. Just like that. Boom. There you go. So, that is our first cut here of a top round steak. All right? Let's just take another steak off. Okay. Look at that. Nice, big, meaty top round steak. And when this is cut nice and thick the way it is here, you can see that in its thickness. As we lay it down, you can see there. This is a great, great piece for the grill. Uh, you know, this is something mm -hmm. where if you marinate it, if you're having a nice uh, nice uh, cookout in the summer, which I wish it was right about now. We showed you that snow earlier. Not a big fan. Anyway, this is a great piece to marinate and throw on the grill. So that is how you get top round steaks out of a whole top round. <laughs> okay, so let me also show you on this beautiful... Top round steak, we're going to get them really close on this one. So I can show you the grain of this. Now, we talked about the London broil. Uh, one of the main characteristics being to cut this real thin across that grain. All right, so what I want to make clear here is if you can see these muscle fibers, right, they are running, this is a good one right here. They're running like in this general direction, sort of from the top of the meat down to the bottom. Okay, and what we're going to do, you kind of see it, it's still, it's going in this direction. You want to cut that perpendicular to the muscle fiber, right? So you're going to take this piece and, and when you slice it, you're going to cut it right along perpendicular. You can see these muscle fibers right here. I'm not moving my knife because I don't want my finger in the way. But you see these muscle fibers right here and my knife is nice and perpendicular to those. Let's say you started slicing this. I'm going to take a little bit off. This way it's easier to see. Okay? So we're going across those fibers, and you're going to cut this. Let me just move it here a little bit over. You're going to cut this nice and thin. Right? You're going to keep those fingers out of the way. Now, again, when you do this, the piece of meat will be cooked. I'm just trying to show you this for, for demonstration purposes there. So you're going to get these nice, thin slices okay and the important part is you've gone across this grain just this way 